Hi, I'm Derek Latta. We're here to talk about the biggest exercise myths. And joining me to talk about this is Dr. Leah Janine, an assistant professor of exercise and sports science at Nova Southeastern University. Thank you for being here, doctor. Thank you Appreciate so much that. for having me. Um, tell us about your passion about for exercise science. I mean, pretty girl, young, how did you get so passionate about exercise? I actually started teaching a hip hop class when I was 19 up at University of Florida. And I just absolutely loved it. I loved being a part of the rec center. The environment was fun and different than anything else I experienced. Mm -hmm. And health and exercise, it just seemed more relevant than any of my other subjects. Great. So I love it. Well, we came to the right person. Today. We're gonna talk about some misconceptions and myths about exercise. And um, do you think the internet's helping spread myths? I mean, where do the myths come from? Absolutely. I, I mean, I think exercise myths are like any other folklore out there, you know, it's like okay. it's like folklore, but now we have the internet, so it's on hyperspeed. Um, I, people hear something, and some of it, I can see why people would think this, but mm -hmm. people just aren't challenging it. They aren't looking it up, and a lot of it also comes from companies looking to make money. You mm -hmm. know, their their agenda is to sell their product, whether exercise nutritionally. It's not necessarily to spread the best information out there. Okay. So I hear these all the time. Okay. Well, the first myth is okay. cardio. Cardio comes first. Is, is there a particular order that an exercise regimen has to happen? Cardio first and weights, then cold? Uh, well, for the average person, I mean, I'm happy if they're doing both. So you're doing cardio and <laughs> okay. weights in the same workout. That's awesome. Um, I typically tell people to do what you're going to skip first. So if you're going to skip cardio after you lift, then fine, do some cardio. But the reality is if you're strength training, you really want to be at optimal performance when you're strength training so you can lift more. So if you're really fatigued, you're more likely to get injured, you're not gonna be able to lift as much versus doing the weights first. So I would always say, you know, I would say weights first unless you're training for a marathon or something where you need optimal cardiovascular endurance. You've been sleeping all night, eight hours, you get to the gym, you start doing cardio, your body's going after fat stores because you already burned down all the glucose on your muscles, correct? So is it probably a better fat burning method to do cardio first thing in the morning when your body has n no more glucose? Or no, um, so what you're talking about is fasted cardio, which a lot mm -hmm. of people will do. Um, and you know, you're know you storing glucose in your liver and in your muscles. So your body has a decent amount of stored glucose. So you know if you had a carbohydrate dinner the night before and you wake up, you're not out of glucose that morning. So it just, it's, it's not really working that way. Um, there are some benefits to fasted cardio in terms of um, weight running, but I would never want to do fasted cardio and then try to lift weights okay. at that point. I mean, you're just going to be fatigued and miserable. Right. Not the best plan. And is, your body's probably going to cannibalize muscle at this point? Well, whenever you're in a state of fasting, like your body doesn't just pick I'm only going to burn from fat stores. So it's going to pick fat and muscle. Okay. You know, um, now there are things that you can do to protect your muscle. So if you have a high protein meal, even if it, you're at a caloric deficit, mm -hmm. that's going to preserve your muscle a lot better than it would if you had a balanced meal. Okay. And on, on that particular note, the, the other myth is you hear about is do I need, do you need electrolytes after every workout? No, well, not our standard workouts. I mean, if you're running a marathon, by all means, you definitely need electrolytes at that point. Um, but it drives me crazy when I see people that are really overweight downing a full sugar Gatorade, mm -hmm. because at that point, I mean, a full sugar Gatorade's probably about 200 calories, so that's gonna take two miles to burn off. So now, you ca if you're looking yeah. only at the caloric expenditure, you're negating your, just, your workout. Um, and electrolytes are really everywhere. I mean, sodium and chloride, salt, those are two electrolytes. Calcium is an electrolyte. You can get it from almond milk. Protein shakes typically have electrolytes. Okay. Um, and if somebody's overweight, they still have you know, Gatorade Zero or things that don't have sugar in it. If you're stuck to your Gatorade, that will then help. So maybe water with a drop of some lemon in it would give you electrolytes? Lemon, I mean, it's gonna flavor your water a little more, but that's okay. not that's not gonna cover your bases on electrolytes. Okay. <laughs> How about protein after lifting weights? People say, man, you need to get that protein to, to build the muscles of not you know, you're, you're wasting the muscle always, atrophying your muscle. Protein what? is good post-workout. Um, I do think that people got a little obsessed with this. When I first came out, like, consume your protein 30 minutes post-workout, and people mm -hmm. at, like, minute 33 were freaking out. <laughs> you know, your body's still absorbing protein. It may slowly decline, um, but your body's still absorbing protein. And there are benefits to having protein prior to your workout as well. Okay. Um, and that's really more than new research. Okay. And myth number three is uh, static stretching. Is that... Uh, is that the best kind of stretching? 
Actually, no. Um, there's PNF stretching, um, but it's proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. But basically, you're pulling the leg back, resisting against it, and pulling back. So in terms of best stretching for flexibility, that's going to be your best stretching. Um, static stretching prior to lifting weights is absolutely horrible. Um, you're actually less likely to be able to lift as much. Think about muscle as a rubber band. Um, so you want to do some dynamic warm-ups, but you don't want a static stretch before you lift. And a lot of times people will do static stretching without warming up and then injure themselves trying to prevent themselves from getting injured. All right. What exactly is a static stretch? Like When you're holding any position. So if you're holding a stretch for, typically it's 10 to 30 seconds. So if I, like you mentioned some, somebody wants to lift weights, maybe do some curls, how would I static stretch right now to stretch so I don't get injured doing well, curls? Well, the bicep is one of those hard muscles to really stretch because of the limitation with the elbow. Okay. So I mean, you can stretch it back and then bring back and forwards, much like the pecs. Okay. Um, but again, it, there are no, there's no link to stretching in terms of muscle building, which is a myth, and there's no link to uh, stretching in terms of overall soreness. Mm -hmm. So stretching is great in terms of um, making you more flexible for your like activities of daily living, right? So you don't want to be really like cramped up. Mm -hmm. Look at stretching in that light, but it's really not preventing much. Uh, and if you're doing it before your workout, it's preventing you from getting optimal strength gains. How about this? I've heard that too. Also. It's turning fat into muscle when exercising. That drives me crazy. I actually teach this in my class. I'm like, can you turn your heart into your liver? It is two different cells. I like that. You know, it, it just does not happen. It, it, it absolutely drives me crazy because people say, I don't want to lift a lot of weights because when I stop, it'll all turn to fat. Mm -hmm. There's, it, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> Another myth is targeted weight loss. Look, I want to, I can target my stomach by doing sit-ups, for example. Yeah. That's a myth, obviously. It's, you can't do that, correct? Yeah, yeah. That is absolutely probably the, the most common myth that I receive. Same thing with like older ladies. Like, how do I remove the fat in the back of the arm? Hmm. Crunching's great. It will strengthen your rectus abdominis. It'll strengthen your core. Mm -hmm. All those things are wonderful, but if you've got a huge layer of fat there, you're not seeing it. You yeah, might as well just reduce the total calories. Okay, my, my producer Penelope says that liposuction is probably the only <laughs> spot reduction for fat. Exactly, that is the only way you can spot reduce. You know, genetics determine where you're losing your fat. We can't. So maybe we'll have a liposuction uh, guest here one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, lastly, um, lifting weights will make you bulky. Like women say, I don't want to lift because I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be big. I mean, is that a myth as well? It's really hard to get bulky, okay? I mean, women, if we're working out a lot and supplementing protein, we might be able to gain a quarter of a pound of muscle a week, which means, I mean, if you're really working hard, you can get a pound of muscle a month with heavy weightlifting. The other thing that makes me laugh about this is people are so scared they're gonna get too bulky. Like, you don't just like, Insta muscle, you right. know, you don't exactly. wake up like Popeye. It doesn't happen yeah. that way. It's a slow, progressive build. Yeah, those women with those incredible muscular bodies, they've been doing it for years. Yes. And discipline and the diet is like, yeah, just not one day to the other. <laughs> yep. Dr. Janine, thank you very much again thank for your time you. and shedding so much great light on, on the subject. Awesome, thank, thank you, you so much. My pleasure. More smart